Oh, hello everyone and welcome to this webinar where we're going to be looking at uh, the futures market basically uh, looking at how we can day trade it uh, using volume price analysis and um, and also some other instruments and uh, what else you need to know uh, before you even uh, consider opening a trade on your chart but before we uh, get on to that can I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, trading can be a very risky business, so please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. So very quickly, just for those of you who are coming along for the first time, I said we're going to look at some charts, and we always look at the charts um, through the prism of our methodology, which is volume price analysis. It's the relationship between the price action and the volume to essentially tell us uh, what it is that we're looking at. Is it a genuine move or not and the details of, of the of the methodology the basic concepts of the methodology you can find in this book up on amazon and there's a companion book with it as well which has um worked examples it has 200 uh, sort of chart examples that's what this one is uh, for stocks it also has indices and it's got commodities as well but in a way the chart, um, whatever the chart is, is almost irrelevant. The, the principles are the same and you can use it across the markets and in different times, uh, time frames as well. And the nice thing about looking at examples is that the, the market, re everything repeats in this market, not 100% identically each time, but the same sort of um, chart structure, a pattern, a combination of, uh, of volume and, and, and price action, the anomalies, you know, they, they, they happen again and again and again. And once you get to um, understand them and recognize them, then you know, you, they, your kind of eye is drawn to them as soon as you see them on the chart. And it kind of gives you what I call an aha moment, because what they're there for, what these anomalies are there for, they, they, if you understand them, you will, you can take a step back and say, ah, that's an anomaly. That's not, that's not how it should be. But every other trader who doesn't use volume out there, who doesn't understand this relationship between price action and action, is going to be sucked in. And that's what you don't want to become. You don't want to be sucked in into trades where essentially the, you know, everything is stacked uh, uh, against you. I think I read somewhere the uh, the principle, you know, the, the, the purpose of the market is to, you know, um, take your money in the shortest possible time. And, but if you understand what the chart is, is signaling then you know you are in charge. Um, you know you're not going to be drawn in either by a fear of uh, missing out, or as I said, um, you know these anomalies that that appear on the charts. And we'll show you the anomalies um, as we look through the different instruments that we're going to do today. And volume price analysis. It's, it's the foundation, if you like. As I said, it's volume, price action. We use candles and candle patterns. Other people use uh, use bars. We, you know, candles and candle patterns. When we first started, they were kind of just coming in. So it tells you how long we've been doing this. But they are kind of, you know, the the um, the trading desks use them now. They um, they've just become much more acceptable to, to Western uh, traders. But they've been in they used in uh, in Japan for I don't know how many years, David. 100 years, 150 years, a long, a long time anyway. And the last, uh, the fifth element, not least, probably the most important after price action and volume, and that is support and resistance. And on top of that, once you, once you've, um, uh, you understand these elements, you can then add on your indicators, your standard indicators. We have, uh, uh, we have our own proprietary ones that we have de uh, developed. And again, you can see them on the chart, right? When I said earlier, I said, obviously, as a day trader, we all, you know, you will look at a chart. This is where we all start, what your time frames are, whether you use minutes, seconds, you use some non-time based charts, such as we have uh, Renko charts as well. That's fine. Um, those of you who may not know, we've also put together a program for our Forex traders. And part of that, uh, in that program, we have modules which not just cover uh, the technical analysis side, which is for VPA, but it also has modules on the fundamentals and the related market. So it gives you what we call a 3D approach. And as what we what we've discovered over the years is just, perhaps as day traders, the, the focus has been solely on the chart. Uh, clearly, when you're 
trading a fast chart, of course you want to you want to become an expert in you know in what is going on in the chart. But price action, the chart doesn't move in a vacuum. You know there, there is a whole landscape behind it, which will include the releases, the daily uh, you know the daily releases, the economic uh, releases. It will also be against the background of what is going on in the broader. Uh, economy, you know, are we on broadly speaking? Are we on risk on, or are we on? Uh, are we at risk off? There's a third element as well, and that is, there are four main capital markets. There's the forex market, the bond market, the commodity market, commodities, and equities. And we indices are, if you like, the futures for uh, for the equities. But they are all interrelated. They 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 have relationships between themselves, and also there are internal relationships between in the individual markets. And you have to be aware of what is going on in in the in these other markets, particularly if you are, as I said, if you are trading the uh, uh the the indices because obviously you want to know what the stock market is doing is it going up is it going down what is it what's uh, being affected uh, you know what is it affecting at the moment and of course today if this actually comes up i'm having a few problems with my machine lately it seems to have uh, slowed down enormously hopefully it will come up oh there we are um let's have a look at what the um what the um there we are. Obviously, today at three o'clock, we have um, uh, we have Jay Powell that's testifying on uh, at Capitol Hill. I think he's before the Senate uh, Bank, uh, the Senate Banking Committee. It was it's a two day testimony. He started yesterday, and today is the second day. Now, whatever you know, whenever Powell speaks, whenever the Fed speaks, it's going to have a massive influence. Um, can cause volatility. It can. He can. You know what he says. He can actually reverse the markets, and that's what we saw yesterday. There, um, we've got a chart for the NQ that David's going to talk you through to give you, as I said, these examples of BPA, and you can kind of see what is potentially coming along the track, so that you are aware and you can be prepared now the nq has had a, has had quite a sharp sell off for all sorts of reasons uh, partly because of what is going on um uh, what is going on in the bond market the bond market yields have been rising um because there is a potentially inflation coming down uh, coming down the track there's sort of more fear coming into the market there's a said there's all these elements that we can combine together to actually drive the price right down on the faster time frames now all these strands as i said as, as as a day trader we all start with the chart i do accept that and you have to become proficient in chart reading and once you know if you have vpa at least you can you know you have that under your belt so you you will see you will know what is coming on but as i said price action you know it, it it there is a background narrative to to that and you have to be aware of when that which elements of that narrative is likely to impact the instrument the, that you are trading going back to the nasdaq tech has been uh, that's you know very much uh, a, a tech dominated index so you be so if you trade the nq you will want to find out well, which you know which of the companies are in there what's driving it um what are the drivers for uh, uh for tech companies for growth companies well one of the big drivers has been the money the stimulus that the fed has pumped into the system a lot of cheap money and that has gone into uh, into what are called growth stocks. Recently, as I said, uh, the market has become very fragile and has pulled back, highlighted by VPA. Again, David will uh, highlight that for you. But the NQ, but the Dow or the YM, which is um, the E-mini futures for the Dow, hasn't really responded in time, but in kind. Um, the Dow is obviously made up of only 30 stocks, but the bias of the Dow is, although there are growth stocks in uh, the Dow, has, if you like them, they're slightly more value-based. So you have to understand, well, what do you mean by value stocks? What do you mean by uh, by growth stocks? It's all this that you have to have as part of a more general um, education, if you like, to supplement your your uh, you know your your technical analysis skills, as it were. 
And of course, there is the bond market. Now, it's quite interesting with bond yields. Bond yields are going up. When bond yields start to go up, bond prices go down. And bond yields going up, it means money is going to be much more expensive. So that gives you a number of clues. So if you are perhaps trading, uh, um, I don't know, a, an index that has that's heavily weighted to the financial sector, or what is the, you know, uh, what is the industry, what is the sector that is going to profit, if you like, from uh, interest rates going um, increasing inflation and potentially interest rates going up as well. Well, it's going to be the banks because the banks only have one product that is called debt. So if they have to raise, if the cost of money is going up, then it's going to be more expensive to uh, to borrow money. Now, what's interesting with the bond yields and the, uh, and the stock market is there is a point at which they are, they could actually go to up together, but there is a point at which they cross over, and in which case the stock market then starts to uh, uh, turn over, and yet yeah, bond yields potentially could carry on higher because if you run a business, you have to borrow money, becomes more expensive, etc., etc., etc. You just have to keep an eye on what is going on in these other markets and we look at the VIX to tell us what um, you know whether as the sentiment as to what traders and investors what are they feeling are they feeling complacent are they feeling fearful etc etc so it's all part of this much broader education that you have to develop as as a day trader and it doesn't really matter what you trade if it's forex as I said we have a program that covers all that for you if you're trading an index as I said there are all these other elements that you have to become aware of. It doesn't happen overnight, it won't happen overnight, but you'll gradually become aware of these relationships. And you'll say that when you open your chart, you think, oh, right, you look at the technical picture, but you know what is going on in the background. Markets, I've got this picture to show you, and I, I wanted to show you because it did make me chuckle. Um, is this one, where's it gone? Uh, do, 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 where's the blue, here we are. That's it. This is from um, this is from uh, Bloomberg. Here we are. How much do central banks fear the bond toddler? Central banks at the moment, they have, you know, their responsibility, certainly with with the Fed, is to they have to uh, uh, manage what, the employment, the the um, the labour market. You know, the, the pandemic has caught, has devastated jobs, and lots of people have uh, have lost their jobs, and the empl employment rates are going higher. So their part of their remit is to job, you know, to support the uh, the jobs market, and you can do that if you if you are having to raise interest rates and the cost of money is going up, then it's going to make um, expanding the economy that much more difficult so and they and there's all sorts of things that they try and do and they try and manage if you like the um uh, the um the cost of money the uh, the interest rates but they are um they you know sometimes the markets you know take on a life of uh, of of their own and the markets have also been very spoiled since the great financial recession in which through stimulus where the central banks have printed more money have created more bonds and you know created this liquidity and it's gone into the markets but a lot of it has gone into supporting stock prices and many people are saying they're overvalued they've just gone up on on, on fresh air and you know it's just not um you know it, it it's unsustainable and when things become unsustainable in the markets, it's the bond market that will react. And that's where you will find the clues. The bond market has been tamed, if you like, until very recently. But with yields going up, that is um, that is a cause for concern. And I just thought this photograph was really, really, uh, really, really interesting. And it's a fantastic article. Even if you don't uh, subscribe to Bloomberg, I'll put the um, uh, I'll put the link in the in the chat box and you you can read um, a few articles for free without having to subscribe. Now, what's also happening in the background is if I mentioned commodities, commodities are moving higher. The soft's going higher. They're, they're in quite a strong trend. Oil is going higher. That points to potentially the start of um, a commodity super cycle. Well, what is that going to mean? It's going to mean everything is going to become more expensive. Therefore, inflation is going to be driven into the economy. And as I said, the cost of money, that drives the cost of money, blood, et cetera, et cetera. 
What's interesting is the things that you and I consider to be important and inflationary are not necessarily the things that the central banks can, you know, look at to decide whether we are in an inflationary environment. So there is this dichotomy, if you like, uh, between what they think is expensive and what we think is expensive. And certainly, if you're anything like me, you know, like us, well, food is a fairly basic uh, you know, necessity, and if food prices are rising and they're rising strongly, then it's going to impact us very, very badly. And, you know, we've got a problem with employment as well. But food prices is not something that uh, is considered, not considered, it's, it's not in the inflation equation that the Fed use when uh, setting their monetary policy, because the Fed use another metric they call the it's called the PCE is the personal consumption um, expenses isn't it David personal consumption expenses it's all this kind of stuff that you know you have to kind of uh, pull together as it were and as I said even if you are a, um, a, a day trade you know whether you just do the indices whether you do uh, commodities or you know, nothing that is not forex specific. Uh, the book that's on Amazon, it's called The 3D Approach to Forex Trading, but there's plenty in there which is applicable to other markets. <laughs> We're obviously waiting. We're not... Um, we're still in the um, in Globex at the moment. The physical market hasn't opened, but I just wanted to draw your attention to, as I said, the daily chart of uh, of the YM, and just note uh, we're looking at candles and candle patterns. The number of doji candles that we have here, I mean, I don't know whether you could call that possibly a hanging man candle with a, a huge a ton of volume underneath it. It's not quite as developed as we have seen on the NQ, and David's got, I will explain that to you. We call this sort of um, catenary price action, but it's interesting the number of dojis that are on uh, at, at the top at, at the moment with the YM. A doji candle is basically indecision, it's not necessarily a, a reversal. We have to keep an eye on you know, what is happening at the moment. We've got, uh, I've got some levels on here uh, that. Um, where the index may or may not be heading. It's certainly finding support at what we call the S3 here. I have to get the, where is it? I'll just move that down. Hold on a second, if I can find it. I can never move this out of the way. Hold on. It's ridiculous. Oh, there it is. You can't see, you can't, there we are. Let's have a look. <clears throat> Could you click on the F, the top right of the Yeah, I will. That's gone. That's it. Let's have a look. Here we are. Where's it? Good. Where's it got some support? Price thirty-one three uh, three forty. The thirty-one three forty-one. Thirty-one three forty. We can see here uh, it's the support line. I know the wicks have gone below that, right down to the S four, but that is pretty much the the support platform that we're working off. Certainly for this week, because the the indicator that I'm using here to help me with support and uh, price-based support and resistance is our is based on Camarilla and this level is going to be in play for the rest of the week and it's interesting the third level for Camarilla the third and the fourth levels are are possibly the most important and the the whole of this week so far it's been uh, between the R3 to the top and the S3 to the bottom so it's in a sort of broad congestion now it needs to get through the S3 they've also got this volume uh, resistance up here because we look at support and resistance uh, which is volume base which comes off the volume point of control and when you get um, one of these bands that comes up on the on the uh, VPOC particularly at the outer extremes of uh, the volume point of control it can it can be a point where you will get a reversal but the person who will determine this whether we get a reversal today or a continuation of it is a bullish trend, although we are in a congestion at the moment with a lot of indecision, is actually going to be uh, uh, Jay Powell. He's, you know, he's, his commitment is to, is to obviously part of his remit to the employment market, to managing uh, 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 interest rates, etc. But 
He's also now got uh, the bond market on his back because if yields uh, uh, keep rising and we've got, as I said, commodities going higher as well. But for today, it's certainly poised. We know what our levels are. It's been pushing higher, but it is capped at the moment at this top level, which is uh, 31,570. So, you know, we're just going to have to wait, see what happens at the open, and also, more importantly, see what uh, Jay Powell says. So, just to recap, by all, you know, got your technical analysis, you've got your VPA, you've got your indicators, but you do have to broaden your knowledge out to the, uh, you know, to to the other uh, sections of the market, which will also impact what you are seeing on the chart. Hi everybody, hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you can see my screen. I'll turn around. Yep, yep, brilliant. Anna can hear me and I can see my screen, so that's great. Um, I just wanted to start with the uh, currency futures. This is um, on Ninja Trader. I've also got them on TradeStation as well. Um, this is the 6A, the 6B, which is cable. This is 6C, which is uh, CAD dollar. This is Euro dollar. This is uh, Yen dollar. And this is New Zealand dollar, because the dollar is always the counter currency. And the reason I just wanted to pull that up was if I pull over the trading view and the dollar index, it's had a really strong move in uh, in the dollar since this is one o'clock. So this is for us, this is the open of, of really the US markets getting underway at one o'clock our time. And it's something you see continuously. You'll see it um, when we go to the London trading session when, that, when London opened up at eight o'clock. And the same is true at the US session when it opens at one o'clock. Um, you will often see these very strong moves, and we're seeing it now for, uh, as I say, for the dollar index there. So I just wanted to highlight that to start with, just to kind of paint the picture, if you will. And we're seeing that obviously reflected in terms of the majors. And the nice thing with the currency futures is because the dollar is always, and you can see it over here, this is on 15 minute, 15 minute CSI. There we go. This is the dollar, the red line rising very strongly. And you can see how strong it is because this is the Aussie dollar selling off sharply. This is the CAD pound selling off sharply. This is uh, this is CAD dollar, remember. So this is the Canadian dollar selling off, being being bought uh, with the buying of the dollar. This is selling on euro dollar, selling on uh, on yen dollar, and also on the New Zealand dollar. So it just gives you a really good snapshot of um, the impact of the dollar really across the futures market particularly in terms of currency futures really nice volume here you can see we've got uh, this nice price waterfall breaking away from the volume point of control here decent resistance in overhead there that was support now resistance obviously um, as i explained in the in the webinar this morning when you get down to these low volume regions here on the volume point of control you expect the market to move through there pretty rapidly you can see in this case it's associated with rising volume so we've got the classic example here of rising volume nice price waterfall developing the trend monitor here i'm just keeping an eye on what's going on the dollar is still riding sharply uh, it's now uh, going up 90 spot 26 27 is rising strongly and that's why you're seeing this move develop really across the complex in other words the entire complex is now buying the dollar for whatever reason i don't really care why they're buying it i just need to know they are and that's what's going on and it's supported by the volume profile which is just this really nice rising volume falling market as i explained this morning rising volume under a rising market is intuitive it's it's effort and result you expect it to take effort to to get things to rise because we're all used to the concept of gravity so to get something into the air takes effort that is certainly true in terms of price action but it also applies equally to a move to the downside because a move to the downside will not develop fast it won't develop this price waterfall unless you've got strong volume driving it in other words heavy selling pressure there's got to be heavy selling in there if if the volume is falling not going very far it's as simple as that absolutely dead simple it really is and it's just such a a confirmation of the strength of that particular move and then of course at the other end of the spectrum what you're now looking for if you're looking for this as a reversal you're looking for the bias to step in and maybe reverse that particular trend but for the time being that's what we're seeing this is what's going on just pull it over again so you can see it on on the dollar index here 
there we go that's what's going on that's on this is on five minutes um so i could take this down to two minute take it down to a faster one there we go you've got uh, volatility i've got the volatility trigger on here as well so you're getting a little volatility as well so it's it's very volatile the trend monitor down here you can see is supporting the move higher you know it hasn't come to an end yet still carrying on really nice and obviously what you would do you should have this on different time frames i can do it very quickly on here it's just trading view is a fantastic platform it obviously colors, covers both the markets as well. So it's really, really powerful. Uh, and you can move through it pretty quickly. Obviously, the idea is having the multiple time frames you can do up here, but I won't, I won't change this just for now so you can see what's going on. But that's the move in the dollar, really strong buying. But you've got to remember, this is ahead, as a, ahead of Powell speaking at, what, three o'clock our time. So it's just sort of an hour and three quarters. And it's inevitable you will get volatility, and there is also the potential for quite a strong reversal as well in whatever has been the precursor to that, because it just goes hand in hand. Whenever you get these big news releases, what you're looking for is uh, why is the market reacting like this? Does it know anything? Has it has it does it have an insight into what Mr. Powell is going to say? The answer is probably not, um, and therefore why is it doing this? And your conclusion from that is well in that case i'm looking for the possibility of reversal you will see this in a microcosm way in uh if you look at if you watch a non-farm payroll for example um and i'm talking about minute time frame probably or less than minutes in seconds maybe uh, you'll see the market react very strongly ahead of any release like that uh, in a minute before it half a minute whatever two minutes three minutes maybe and almost inevitably, it will go in one direction, which is the opposite to the direction the market actually delivers thereafter. And you have to ask yourself why. And it's because that is the time at which the market makers are making money. It's as simple as that. It's absolutely as simple as that. That's where we are now. This is the strong buying. This is the strong selling of the pound we've seen. Um, so we've got a nice, uh, you know, in terms of cable, pretty strong trend there because you've obviously got heavy selling in the pound. You've got now heavy buying in the um in the dollar let's just move this out of the way if i can grab it can't move it there we go let's move it out of the way let's pop that up over there there we are so that's out of the way so that's where we are at the moment now what are we seeing in terms of uh the move lower and the other beauty of doing it in this way particularly across a complex where you're dealing with essentially instruments that are interrelated themselves within their own market which of course these currency futures are what this also gives you is a different insight into, for example, down here on the five minute euro dollar, I can see we've got a volatility trigger. Now, there's no great surprise because we had a big widespread candle, but we've got a ton of volume underneath. This is way outside the average true range. What we're expecting thereafter is a bounce, either a bounce in terms of congestion or we're expecting a full blown reversal. But at the very least, we're expecting a pause point. Now, if I'm in this position and I get one of these volatility triggers, I'm in this price waterfall, I've made a load of money in here, I'm out. I close out 99% of the time because I don't want to sit through a congestion or worse still, a reversal. So I'll quite happily take my profit off the table. And the beauty with this indicator is it was actually triggered in real time. I wasn't watching it at the time, we were watching the dollar. But had I seen this come in, I would have taken the position out of the market, closed out, because now I'm just going to wait and see what's going to happen next. Are we going to see congestion? or are we going to see a full-blown reversal develop thereafter? But more importantly, what that signal is giving you, if you were trading one of these other pairs up here, which have actually not delivered a volatility trigger, what it's giving you is a very different view, a perspective on what potentially may be happening in these related markets up at the top here as well. So it just gives you a different perspective. So it's not always about multiple timeframes. It's also about looking at what is going on in related markets, both inter-market and also cross-market relationships, which is so important. Let's just go and see what's happening in terms of the other markets. Uh, let's take a look at the indices and see what sentiment is like here and obviously there is going to be a certain amount of uh, volatility is going to be pausing ahead of uh, what is like to say and all the rest of it but if i flick up the nq just pull that out make it a bit easier there we go this is yesterday's price action the wick goes from here right the way down to here you may not be able to see it but i can assure you it does it goes below the volume point of control uh, just below 12,800. but look at the ton of volume that came in yesterday absolutely huge amount of volume the market, this is a massive shakeout, the opportunity for the big operators and market makers to make a ton of money on PALS News, 
crash the market, everyone in panic mode, go in the buy and reverse it back up again. It's just a classic uh, trap maneuver in terms of accumulation, in terms of accumulating stock, whatever it may be, to frighten the market to death. And then uh, just walk in with uh, with the carrier bags and, and wait for everyone to dump and then just go in and buy. It's very simple. The explanation of, of what we like to see thereafter, of course, is given this huge amount of buying is now what we're looking for is probably some further congestion, then ultimately reversal back up, probably back up to this level once more. And that's what we're looking for. And that's why the daily charts are so important, because they give you that perspective. Exactly the same principle on the ES, which is S&P 500. Market plunged, recovered. It closed pretty much at par on uh, on the ES. Ton of volume underneath. Lots of buying in there. There has to be because if this was selling, if this volume here were all selling volume, then this candle would have closed on the low of the day. It hasn't. It's closed pretty much at the open of the day. So what does that tell you? Very simple. This is buying. The predominance of volume in here is buying volume. Yes, there's people selling in there. Of course, there is heavy selling in there. But the big operators and the market makers in stock markets will have walked in and bought and bought heavily and driven the price action back up. So if they are buying, what does that tell you about what's going to happen in the next few days? The market's going to recover from that particular reversal. The difference, are, as Anna said, is on the YM. The YM is not... Uh, uh, typical it hasn't followed suit we see this a lot this divergence between we've seen the same price action but it's a much higher level and the reason that the markets have been so fragile is this catenary price action here it's as simple as that it's like um it's like the it's like half of an arched bridge if you will so this is one half and if you manage the imagine the other half coming down here to match it my cursor has gone off the screen apologies but basically it would look something like that it's like an archway that's the sort of price action and what you're looking for in association with that is also falling volume because generally speaking what you've got through here is falling volume in a rising markets and more importantly what you're seeing the reason you're seeing this arching effect is because you're seeing narrowing spreads coming in narrowing price action so you're getting this effect if the market's going up rapidly then it's going to go up like this on wide spreads and march its way up and it's going to be on a, on a diagonal of 45 degrees or 40 degrees whatever but as the spreads narrow, then the curve actually flattens and it goes into this into this arcing, uh, what we call catenary shape, particularly if it's supported by falling volume, which you've got here. Now, we've actually got buying coming in here. The market's crashed. We bought, crashed, we've bought. So the market is being supported at this level. Depending on what happens with the NQ and the S will then dictate what goes on in terms of, of the YM. Now, obviously, the YM is a very different animal to, to both of those in terms of the constituent elements. But nevertheless, that's what we're seeing at the moment. We are seeing support of the market and the potential for a rally higher, which in terms of um, in terms of risk sentiment and in terms of, of the currency markets and related markets, in terms of commodities, in terms of commodity currency pairs, in terms of bonds and all the rest of it, you know, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a potential for uh, a recovery once more from that uh, shakeout day, which occurred yesterday. Another very simple example of, um, of really a, a price waterfall developing. You can see the rise in volume here. It's classic. We've got a nice widespread down candle on high volume. The difference here is if you were entering this particular position as a trade, you'll be looking at it and thinking, well, how far is this likely to go before it hits trouble? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's going to stop here at the VPOT. Why? Because that is the heaviest concentration of volume. You've also got a support platform of the accumulation distribution indicator. This is based on price. This blue dashed line here is very thick. You may not be able to see it here, but there's a little number nine alongside it, which tells me that it's been tested and supported nine times in the past. And that's the reason it's so thick, because what the indicator does, it actually presents these in terms of a, a pictorial representation of strength and weakness. You can see down here these thin lines, these, these light dashed lines. They've only been tested once, twice, you know, once, twice, once, once. These are very these are, are less important. This is very important. This is extremely important, but it gives you that visual picture instantly. But what that's from a price perspective, what the volume point of control does from a volume perspective, it presents these volume, uh, this volume histogram, which works in the same way, even more so at the VPOT. Once the price action gets the VPOT, and guarantee that it will go into a congestion phase because you have so much volume there. 
sitting there in terms of, of old orders, new orders waiting to be uh, executed. There's a huge amount of volume there in terms of, of order, transactional volume. And therefore, what you expect to see is exactly what is going on now. So if you were jumping into this on the expectation of it slicing through here, I'm afraid you're going to be sadly mistaken because it's just going to consolidate at this region. Now, obviously, you'd be looking at this in different time frames. We're just looking at one here. But that's what's happening. And more importantly, and again, going back to this, this whole business of related markets, inter interrelated markets, what we're looking at here is the YM, the NQ and the ES. What have you got in all three? Well, you've got the volume point of control volume point of control, volume point of control. So if you were trading this short, you know, there's there's 26 different messages there to tell you that this isn't going to, it may well develop longer term, but in the short term, it's a question of just got to be patient and wait for the congestion to die away or break away from the volume point of control. And any break away from the volume point of control has got to be associated with, with good volume, which will confirm the move away. So that's where we are in terms of the indices right now. Um, let's just have a quick look on some of the other commodities. As Anna said, this is uh, you know there is a super there's a super cycle coming coming in terms of, of commodities. We've already seen it in oil. We write about oil. We trade oil. We we write about it regularly. It's been very bullish um, ever since we came off the plunge lower and you know created this great trend which has been consistent, moving up through the various regions. We said it was going to get to around $60, $62 a barrel and going to congest there, which is exactly what it's doing for the time being. Now, obviously, we're waiting for the move to develop to the upside, but for the time being, that's where we're sitting. But it's been a very bullish trend. The same is also true if you look at softs. Let's have a quick look at soft commodities. There we go. This is on the ZS, the ZC, and ZW. So basically, it's uh, soybean, corn, and wheat. Um, on the top line is the five minute, but on the bottom is the daily charts. You just pop any of these open. We've had this uh, big bullish cycle, uh, which has been going on for some time now. Pull it right back. There we go. You know, it really has been an extensive cycle. Now we're sitting around the volume point of control, which where it's been since really the start of start of the year. But if that breaks out higher and goes on, then we're going to see further rises in all of these three. Just pop that up exactly the same, pretty much identical. Just haven't got the volume point of control up at that sort of level. But in terms of the shape of the chart, much the same. And on up to wheat, there we go. So it's very, very bullish across the commodities. And, and really, that means only one thing. It's inflation. Now, the big beneficiary of inflation is going to be gold at some point. It isn't at the moment. This is gold. This is on the GC. This is 04 contract. This is a big contract. So uh, there is a micro contract. There's an MGC, which is a tenth of size. But what you will find is you will not see the smooth price action you get with this contract because this is heavily traded, whereas the MGC micro contract is not. That's, and that's true of any micro contract in the futures world. Uh, you'll find the price action will be less smooth, quite spiky. You'll get little pause points. The price will go somewhere like that, and then it'll pause, won't do anything, and then maybe it'll jump down and go there and then over there. So you don't get this sort of smooth price action, which allows you to reach price and volume smoothly. Other than that, works in exactly the same way. This is the five minute. Big move lower, lots of volume, volatility trigger. What are you expecting? Well, you're expecting one of two things, either reversal or congestion. And that's what's developing right now. And that's why it's such a powerful indicator. If it, can't, it comes in in real time, as I say, it triggers in real time. You don't have to wait for the bar to close, in other words. Now, if you're on a... If you're on a, a fast time frame, if you're on a 15 second or 30 second, well, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't matter too much. But if you're on a, an hourly chart or a 15 minute chart, it does matter uh, because as soon as you see it, it gives you that warning to get out. Uh, if you've got profit in the bank, then take it and get out and uh, bank it and uh, just wait for the market to pause and just what is going to develop. Here we've got a rally in the market. We've got a rally on falling volume, lots of volume coming into this one. This has gone wider on half the volume. Nevertheless, you know, the volume's falling away. Is this going to rally higher? Well, we've got a low volume node to have. If it's going to get through there, it's not going to take much of an effort. But the overall sentiment at the moment is bull is bearish in terms of the faster time frames. This is on 15 seconds. Let's go up to let's go a little bit slower than that. Let's go up to one minute again. We've got a volatility trigger on one minute ton of volume coming in under there which is what we expect to see it means the big operators are in here expect a reversal we've got the volume point of control here you know we're going to see congestion for sure 
nice price waterfall, volume rising, and then bang into the volatility trap at the bottom of it. And you know, it's time to get out and say goodbye and bank your profit. Same on three minute, exactly the same here. Big volatility trigger, ton and a half of volume, tells you the big operators are in there. They're going to be trapping you. They're going to be reversing it. They're going to be reversing or congesting one or the other. Wait for it to clear. If you want to jump back in, that's fine. It's still bearish, obviously. Wait until it clears the bottom of that candle in you know, a decent way, and then you can jump back in. Again, classic example of VPA, falling volume, rising market. It's not going to go far because the volume is falling away. That's what I said earlier on. And you've got the trend monitor there. Trend monitor is pretty much blood red throughout. A little bit of a pause point on one, but really coming out on the other side again. Hasn't really flickered on three. No change on five. Wouldn't expect it anyway. And the same on 10. So it's, uh, you know, it's telling you it's, it's remaining bearish for the time being. And obviously part of that move will be driven by what is going on in terms of the dollar. Because if the dollar is falling, uh, if the dollar is rising strongly, uh, then you expect uh, generally that to react inversely to commodity prices. Let's pull that out. It's actually paused a little bit now. We had that very strong rally. It's come off a little bit. Bear in mind, this is on one. Sorry, just drop that out of the way. There we go. So that's where we are in terms of the dollar at the moment. It's come off a little bit. Let's just pop that back up again, the time and sales. Wherever that. There we go. So I've got the time of sales on here. I always have the time of sales up as well because it gives me a heads up in terms of what's going through in terms of volume numbers down here. This is real uh, volume contracts. So this is not a spoof. This is not on a ladder. This is actually executed, executed futures which are going through the market right now. I'm not interested in the ones and twos going through here. There's hundreds of them. The ones I am interested in are anything over 20 or 30 are the big blocks. In other words, if I see a big block go through here, I want to see how the market reacts to it. Is it uh, is it positive for the market? Is it negative for the market? Is the market not reacted? You know, if the market's bullish and you get a big block go through, and it's just not reacting, you know, it's it's it, it's just giving you those signals of what is what is how is the market reacting to the flow of volume that is moving through it? As I say, these ones and twos are really of no consequence whatsoever. They're what you expect to see. Um, it's the big blocks that you're really looking out for. We do a lot more on time sales, but I always have that up there as well. Just gives me a heads up. Just go back onto the the indices. Just see where we're going. Uh, it's gone to multiple time frames. What I've got, I've got the YM here. Probably not a great deal at the moment. It's all very much, uh, you know, it's pretty much sideways. Going to be waiting for power and all the rest of it. Um, and when the markets are quiet in this way, then if you're going to trade them, you have to move up to the faster time frames. As I've said many times before, move up to 15 second or what. Um, and, you know, again, another classic, these are the sorts of signals you're looking for. You're looking for anomalies. You know, this is anomalous. Why is it anomalous? Because you've got an absolute heap of volume come in here and the price action has gone nowhere. It's anomalous. What is that telling you? It's telling you there's a huge amount of effort gone into that particular candle. And it hasn't gone anywhere. And the analogy I always use is one of, of driving a car up an icy mountain road. The road's getting steeper and steeper, and you're applying more and more pressure to the gas, to the accelerator. And gradually over time, you'll get to a point where you're just applying more and more. The wheels are spinning, and you're not actually moving forward at all. So you, move, you start to slow down until you come to a stop. Your wheels are spinning fast. You're putting in, in other words, you're putting in a lot of effort but you're not actually moving anywhere. And it's exactly the same principle here. A ton and a half of volume gone into that candle, hasn't gone anywhere. So, you know, what does that tell you? It's anomalous. There must be an awful lot of selling in there because if there weren't, this candle would be very tall up the top of the chart here, up the top of my screen somewhere, uh, and it's not. So it's anomalous. It's just giving you all that visual picture on what is like to happen next. Is this going to, uh, you know, carry on that high? No. It's going to move sideways at the least and certainly come off. Now we've come back down to the volume point of control again. Uh, we've got some very strong resistance over here, which we've now breached with that candle. Have we got any support below? No, very little. So we're going to be trading around here for a while. If it breaks the downside, we've got a low volume node here, so we'd expect it to move through there pretty quickly. Then we're going to run down onto this level, which is uh, going to maybe provide some support. Then we've got another low volume area here, which it would go through fairly quickly down to another area here where we would expect it to pause, plus we've got some price-based support coming into play there. We've got two little 
levels there, a cluster of two there to, to offer price-based support as well. And really that's what you're looking for the whole time. Let me just pass back to Anna for a moment. Hold on. Oh, hi. Thanks for coming uh, Coming back. David has uh, moved you back over to me. Right. Um, I had my NinjaTrader platform open earlier and I've now got, uh, this is MT4. One of the questions we often get asked about um, <coughs> futures is obviously if you want to trade the futures contract per se, um, you do have to have, um, you, know, you have to have a certain amount of money to open the account. Although I do accept the CME have now got um, e-minis and they've got micro ones, micro contracts as well, as well. So because they do want to, which are actually very, very popular. But um, a lot of uh, Forex brokers, in fact, all Forex brokers, will give you the opportunity to access these markets. It won't be the, the future uh, contract per se. It will be what's called a synthetic version but it you know the uh the uh, the values will um the price will be the same sometimes it's very slightly off and you will certainly see uh, the candles candle patterns you'll see uh, the volume um and you'll be able to make your analysis uh you know based on what you see uh, and in fact what i've pulled up is the equivalent of uh, the us 30 which is the um uh, the ym the, the, this is the uh, for the Dow basically, and we can see here we have very very uh, similar pa uh, uh, price action pattern chart structure that we saw on uh, the actual futures chart, as it were. And with MT4, you don't have a lot of time frames with MT4. With MT5, you have uh, you have a wider selection, and certainly uh, with the Trading View, you can trade these on Trading View as well. You will have uh, you know a, a better a selection, but a trading view is not a it's not a brokerage, it's a platform, David, isn't it? But if you wanted, what I'm trying to say is if you wanted to try this for free, completely free, all you have to do is open a demo account with a reputable MT4 stroke MT5 broker and you will get the, uh, as I said, you will get access to these instruments. And what I have here, I have uh, the daily I have the hourly chart with those all important key levels. As I said, the S3 has been bumping up against uh, the R3 that we saw on the um, uh, on on the future chart. I have the 15-minute chart, and the thing about our the Camarilla levels, you will, you may notice that the levels uh, are are different. The, uh, where these lines appear on the chart, they appear at different places, and that's because the indicator. Um, it calculates the the support and resist uh, the support and resistance levels for Camarilla um, every 24 hours for all charts up to but not including uh, <clears throat> the hourly chart. On the hourly chart, um, these are going to be here every every week. Now the the importance of having them both up uh, together is with support and resistance is when you get a confluence. So if you get an important level, when price comes up to an important level, say on a slower time frame, this is what David was saying earlier, that slower time frames carry more weight in terms of support and resistance. Um, and on a faster chart, you are approaching that level you get this what we call this confluence then you have to be aware of it because something is you know it's either going to pause uh, or it's going to and certainly if it's going to go through you know whichever way up or down you, it's going to need a lot more volume it's going to need a lot more fuel the nice thing about um this is the our renko chart that we have uh, developed this is um <clears throat> the indicator that we've developed for uh, the Renko charts on MT4 are offline charts, so you have to you have to create it, but you can add the indicators on uh, in exactly the same way. And what Renko does, it it gives you an uncluttered, clean look at price action. There are no wicks to the candles. You will see clearly, very in a very geometric way, the trend the uh, the congestion phases, the break from trend, the points at which 
um, the um, the price action uh, stalls, you get patterns. So you would say you could say that's a, that's a double top basically. Now it, it hasn't actually hit a level. I'm talking about levels here. Um, you say, well, you know, why is why has that developed a double top? Well, you know, we would then look at um, a time, the equivalent time-based chart, and we can clearly see, as I said earlier, it's hit that double top because it hit a volume resistance. So price-based resistance, volume-based resistance. We've got a double top. It came, we're right back to the volume point of control. We've still got another 45 minutes before the physical open. What are we waiting for here? We're waiting for potentially a break from the volume point of control. And, and by looking at the histogram that is produced by the volume point of control, what we see here, this is like a, like a bell curve, if you like, where you have these narrowing, um, these narrow areas here, these are called low volume nodes. And one of the things about volume, looking at volume and price over time is that when the price reaches such an area, it is going to go through fairly quickly because there's nothing in the way to to hold it up as it were whereas when it reaches one of these little bulges if you like then the our expectation is that it's going to act like a cushion so if it, it's going to get through there fairly quickly now when price starts to move very quickly and gathers momentum obviously um, it can trigger volatility and then you have we've got the volatility trigger that you see here was triggered on this on this candle here. So volatility, when things start to move fast in the markets, it's when um, traders start to develop what's called the fear of missing out and they jump in and that can cause all sorts of problems. So we're just waiting for that to, to come down. So that's why we had that double top there. In terms of how you use this uh, in conjunction with the time charts, basically, uh, the trend dot that you see here, and the and the red and the red bricks, and we have the um, uh, the trend monitor down here. What we're looking for is a match of uh, the dot and the monitor. And when you know you look at the time chart as well, you look at the levels that are being approached in uh, in on the time chart and the volume that's going in. You say right, okay, then you know potentially that's going to give me. A, a trade to the downside but that price action is happening within the context of what's going on with the levels as I said on the slower time frames and what I also have down here is talking about the uh, the related markets this is actually the Aussie yen what's happening on the Aussie yen as represented by these lines this is the Aussie and this is the yen now one of the things you, you need to be aware of is the, there are currencies that ref, are proxies for risk. So if the market is uh, in a um, risk off, uh, um, it's, it's in risk off, that's what I'm trying to say, um, certain currencies will be bought. One of them is the yen, one of them is the Swiss franc, the dollar too. Uh, maybe they're safe havens because you know nobody wants to take risk and the market is nervous it's it's worried the Aussie is a risk currency in the sense that it's also represented uh, representing commodities Australia is a huge commodity producing country and as I said commodities have been going out the Australian dollar is absolutely on a tear at, at the moment so the Aussie yen when put together is a proxy and all this line tells me is when there is selling of the of the of the Japanese yen markets will be uh, uh, moving uh, moving higher when the Aussie is moving higher and the yen is move, uh, moving lower, markets will be positive and <clears throat> they'll be taking on more risk when we have a dramatic reversal when the yen is starting to be bought then you know the sentiment may be changing now you may say well that's not actually what I'm what I'm uh, you know what I'm seeing at the moment these you know these no they don't work in lockstep but we have to be aware here that um, you know this this hasn't quite this is overextended and it you know once this starts to turn up that will actually confirm what we're seeing here uh, you know uh, in real time on the uh, on the actual chart for uh, 
uh, for the DAO basically. And also we're coming to a support point here on the R1. So we know where this price is likely to be headed. The R1's not as uh, not as significant. It's another potential pause point um, where it is going to it's aiming for that. What we do is we go back to look at the at the Renko chart and see whether that is carrying on higher. This Renko, this version of the Renko does produce these little wicks to the bottom of, uh, of these little bricks. When you get the wicks to the bottom, you, you, that's actually telling you there is price support coming in. We know that you know the yen is still falling, so it's just putting all these bits of information, uh, you know, together. And as the only thing that is really stopped. Uh, the, the the YM, the Dow going higher, is this resistance, is this big resistance that we see on the S3. You can go back and you can look at the times that this area has actually been a point where it has reversed from. So the chances are it will, you know, if you like probability, probability wise, it is probably going to may not reverse entirely, but will certainly pause and uh, and and maybe congest or as we can see here you know looks looks to be moving lower but what the Renko is telling us is that um, you know there is support coming in and we just have to look at what is happening now I'm going to see if we're going to get a volatility candle because if you've got a volatility candle there it is exactly that's triggered is uh, because this triggers in real time. That went through this low volume node very, very quickly, as we saw here. Now, what happens is, once that's triggered, it's reached this sort of uh, this sort of thicker area of volume uh, uh, support. Now, what happens with volatility is this happens, and a lot of traders say, "Oh, great, I want to jump in in the move." And yes, it may indeed carry on lower. But what tends to happen, it will go back into the spread of that candle and actually reverse back up. You know, we just have to wait and see. It's, it's, you, have, it's, you just have to be aware of you know, what you're looking at in, uh, from the perspective of VPA, looking at the levels, where is the price going to go? It was a break from the volume point of control on the, um, on the time chart. We saw this this move, if you like, from the, all the way back from the double top that we saw on the on the time chart. This is still red. This is what the Renko does is when you're in, it does actually help to keep you in. It's now hit a support, a price based support. It's gone slightly gone through the S1 here. It's a little bit a uh, little bit volatile. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Right. I think there's any any questions. Let's have a look. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, no, the price has got nothing to do with the number of contracts or their value. Is there any scale? No. Nope. If I set a Renko, will it be valid for so? No. If you set a Renko, uh, if uh, no, the Renko chart. If you set a per, the Renko chart. If you set a value yourself to three points, five points, whatever it is, it will stay there until until you change that if you use the atr function that uh, is an option in our renko indicator then the atr function will um, you know it will work its, itself out sometimes you do have to uh, re um uh, the you do have to refresh it yourself and i don't have a link to the mc4 display local time it's something you uh, you can uh, find for yourself on Google. But as I said, I can't vouch for uh, the software or whoever has done it. It's something that we may be looking to do ourselves. You just have to um, take two hours off and, and that's it. Thanks, darling. Just to pick up on the Renko theme, I've just uh, literally put this up. The dollar's rising very strongly. You can see the yen is being bought very strongly. So uh, no great surprise to see what's happening in terms of equities. This is the NQ. This is on 15 second, the equivalent Renko at the top. This is on 30 second, equivalent Renko at the top. And I've got it on one minute, equivalent Renko at the top. It's just a brilliant, brilliant way of uh, combining uh, a time-based chart with a non-time-based chart above in multiple time frames. So this is basically running on a 15 second equivalent. And it's telling me at the moment that we're running at 20. We're on NQ, so it's four ticks per, per uh, point. So it's basically... Um, five points if you will same here we're on 27 here 27 ticks and over here we're on 37 ticks and we get this fantastic price action 
really wonderful with the trend dots. You've got the trend monitor here. The trend dots have, have transited to transition here. You can see they've changed the blue. They've gone from the top, pressing down to the underside, now lifting to the bottom. Same here. You've got the same over here. They've changed color. We haven't actually seen any transition in the trend monitor as of yet. No change here, no change here. Just starting to transition maybe here. And we're starting to see a transition on the time-based chart. But in addition to that, of course, you can use the uh, VPA methodology to look at the uh, what's going on in terms of buying. Got some buying coming in under here. No surprise, we've seen some some reversals going on. Volume's not great. It's kind of falling away. You know, is it going to go very far? Just keep a look on the dollar. Dollar's come off a bit, so you know, expecting a bit of a bounce, which is what we're seeing. But very strong buying on the yen. This is on three minute, I think. Yeah, it's on three minutes. So we've got strong do uh, yen buying on three minute. Um, and that's why we're seeing that particular move there. Very, very smooth. And that's the beauty of Renko. And the beauty of the Ninja Trader Renko is that you can set it to any time frame. If I reset this, this is on 15 seconds at the moment. Remember, it's on 20. Let's see what it comes up with now. It will change slightly. Now we've gone to 29, 28, 28, 29. Just let that settle. There we go. Back in with another phase of price action. You just reset it all the time. And you set it every 5, 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, of course, at the faster end of the market, when the market is really moving quickly, and that's the beauty of a non-time-based chart like a Renko, it will reveal momentum. A time-based chart does not reveal momentum. A non-time-based chart like a Renko or a tick will, because they're not dependent on time. These bricks will form according to the uh, the time it takes for 29 ticks to have been formed in the price action, and then the brick will form. It's completely independent of time. Uh, so the faster this is, the faster that particular action occurs, then the speed, the more speedily the uh, bricks will be built, and you'll see literally they'll come out like a Gatling gun. It's extraordinary when the market is really fast moving, and they build very very quickly and develop these very strong trends. But you can then apply VPA to the underside using the time-based approach as well. It's very very powerful. It's one we use a lot for scalping, obviously. Uh, across all the markets, you can see the yen is rising very strongly as well. Just telling you what's going on. Dollar's rising as well. Come off a little bit in the last couple of minutes, but it's still pretty strong and rising. And obviously, all that's going to change and pause as we get through to Powell in about an hour or so. So there we go. We're at the top of the hour. So we've done uh, just a little bit, uh, gone over time a little bit. So apologies for that. Um, just to highlight all the bits and pieces. Um, there we are. Let's go to the indicators. You can find all the indicators here. Uh, the license for Ninja Traders 7.8, it covers both. So if you're trading NT7 or NT8, it's up to you. You chat, you flip-flop between whichever you prefer. Uh, we just give you a different download because they are coded differently. Uh, we've got MT4.5, as Anna said. Uh, that again, same principle. You can run either platform with the single license. So you choose. We don't mind which it is. And you do that through your own user dashboard. Trading view. Uh, as I said this morning, we're developing those indicators. They'll all be available. So that will be a full package, which will be equivalent to the MT45 in terms of price. So it will go up in price. So if you have the TradingView full package or you purchased it now in the next couple of months, once we release those, the price will go up. But you will get them free of charge if you're already a subscribed customer on the full package. And TradeStation, we've got two versions of TradeStation. We've got uh, TradeStation Global, which is the version that uses interactive brokers as the feed which is on 9.5. And then we've got TradeStation Securities, which is driven through the TradeStation feed itself. Immensely powerful. And you've got radar screen on there. Wonderful platform. Terrifically powerful with the radar screen as well. Uh, and that's all been launched. And there, that is all up and available. And I have to say, going down really well. If you want to keep up with Anna, you'll find it all over at annacooling.com. All the books are up on Amazon. You can buy them in, in Kindle version or in paperback. And all the links to the various sites there as well and the various uh, packages. Finally, that's the education program at quantumtradingeducation.com. Uh, it is called the Complete Forex Trading Program, and it doesn't just cover spot markets. Obviously, it covers its futures as well. And in addition to that, we've bolted on the funded program here so that uh, our students, and this is students only, so that students can uh, leverage that knowledge and trade our money up to $2 million with no risk to you. It's as simple as that. You start with an evaluation count. We give you five, ten, or fifteen thousand to get you going. You choose which size you want to start with, and then once you've uh, hit a, a target that we set, which is very achievable, and proves to us that you're consistent, and you've proved yourself that you're consistent, then we multiply it by four, 
to get you up to the next level. So if you started with 10,000, we take you out, we give you 40,000 as your next level. You earn on profit on that. You get 50% of your profits kicked back to you as a thank you. That's paid up monthly. And then we double the account thereafter. So on 40,000, it goes to 80, 120, 240, 480, and work the way up to 1 million or $2 million. So there we are. That's it. That's where to find all the bits and pieces. Thank you very much for coming along today. We do appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed today. And we will see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of the trading session. And we will see you again next week. So thanks very much indeed. Stay safe. Hope you're staying well. And bye for now.